to church on the waves glory to god it's another tuesday 6 p.m west african time and 1700 hours gmt welcome to church on the waves hallelujah Let's sing that song together. Thank you for joining me this evening. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I welcome you to Church on the Waves this evening. Glory to God. What a precious time together in God's presence. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. I would like you to know who is in the room this evening. I would like to know who is in the room this evening. Please indicate where you are joining from. You can wave at me. Help me to start a watch party. Tell someone to tell someone to tell someone that Church on the Waves is live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That song says, I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. I believe God tonight there shall be deliverance for everyone that will join in this video tonight and in this broadcast tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, wherever the word of the king is, there is power. I believe the release of God's power tonight, even in this broadcast, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 107 verse 20 says he sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them from every destruction. The word of the Lord is coming to you today. I believe it will heal and it will deliver from every destruction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the people of God shall possess their possession. I believe tonight there shall be deliverance and everyone will receive their whole inheritance of blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you once again to Church on the Waves to this broadcast today and I believe that God will do you good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that testimonies are already coming from the edition we had last week talking about the power of the communion table. God had to interrupt as it were our regular broadcast for me to bring that message the power in the communion the power in the communion table if you missed out on it i would like you to check my youtube channel uluag bemigadroja is the youtube channel when you get there you will see all the videos of the past broadcasts of church on the waves it was a very powerful message i could remember when i finished praying you know, I said, I made a statement. I said there will be many babies from that broadcast. You know, after I finished saying it, when it came out of my mouth, I wondered, ah, 
why are you saying babies as in but that is the spirit of god and somebody sent me a mail receiving her own testimony from the prophetic word that came god has given her a sign and i know that the testimony that god has started god will perfect in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In her testimony, she made a statement. She said, I prayed earnestly towards the last broadcast of Church on the Waves, and then God ministered to her. God met her at the point of her need. And when I started the very first broadcast of Church on the Waves, I advised us to maximize what this broadcast has for you and what God has for you via this broadcast, you should pray towards church on the waves. When you pray towards it, you maximize all that God has for you. I also said you should come with an expectant heart. The Bible says concerning that man begging at the beautiful gate, the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive something. I believe God for someone tonight, you will receive a blessing. You will receive a testimony, your own testimony, branded and customized for you from tonight's broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can we just say a word of prayer together? Father, I want to thank you for the gift of life and the privilege to see another broadcast of Church on the Waves. Thank you for testimonies that are coming from the previous broadcast. It is your doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. We say, Lord, be magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. I release myself to you this hour. I ask that you take over my tongue and my lips. Cause me to speak as your oracle and to minister with the ability that you give in the name of Jesus Christ. Let utterance be given to me tonight and cause everyone to hear me speak in their own language in the name of of Jesus Christ. I ask tonight that you remember the covenant to honor your word and glorify yourself in every life of everyone that will watch this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, I welcome you to Church on the Waves. Roti Bumi, thank you for joining us. ADBC, thank you for joining us. Timitokwe, thank you for joining us. I want you to start a watch party, tell your friends, to tell someone that Church on the Waves is on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight, I'll be bringing a message from the heart of God to you, and I believe by extension to the entire world. Hallelujah. I'll be bringing a message to you and by extension to the entire world. Hallelujah. I receive grace from God tonight to be able to communicate His heart to you out there watching and joining in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to thank everyone who has hooked up with us already. Like I said, invite somebody, let them know that Church on the Waves is on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember before we had the last broadcast, which was on the power of the communion, and God instituted that for us to pray for the entire world, and then as a covering for his children, sons and daughters, against the plague of coronavirus. We talked about the power that is in the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, the blood shall be a token to you and to the house where you live. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you and the plague shall not come upon you to destroy you. But before then, we're talking about the greatest, which is love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says, they abided these three, faith, hope and love. He said, but the greatest of these is love. Hallelujah. I want to start from there again. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 says, there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love because perfect love casts out fear. He said, but fear has torment. Fear has torment. He said, but whoever walks in love Whoever walks in fear then cannot be walking in love. Hallelujah. Perfect love casted out fear because whoever walks in fear cannot walk in love. Why? Because fear is the opposite of faith. And the Bible says that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, that in Christ Jesus, neither does circumcision amount to anything nor circumcision, but faith which walketh by love. That means without love, faith cannot operate. And once faith is in place, fear cannot also coexist with faith. Once faith is in place, fear has to disappear. And so God gave me a message to share with you tonight and everyone who will watch this broadcast joining us live now and those who will watch thereafter managing fear managing fear you know if um i want to you know be sensational i will say overcoming fear 
but that is the way he gave me the message. By the grace of God, I'm a medical doctor, and we talk about managing patients. And when you are managing a case or you are managing a patient, part of your management includes treatment. So managing fear already includes overcoming fear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to take my text for this teaching. I would like to go slowly and then be able to teach. I receive grace from God tonight to communicate his heart to you in Jesus' name. It's a very popular passage of the scripture. I will paraphrase it because of the length. Many of us know it so well. If you call any child now and tell him, tell me a Bible story, I'm sure they will tell you about this story. You know it. You know it. It's the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17. The story of David and Goliath. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, I will paraphrase it, so I will just read a few verses. In verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were assembled at Soko, which belongs to Judah. And they encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ebes Damon. If you go to verse 4, And a champion went out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits, and a span almost ten feet. And he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of mail, and the coat weighed five thousand shekels of bronze. He had bronze shin armor on his legs and a bronze javelin across his shoulders, and the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. His spear's head weighed, just the head of the spear alone, weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. Well, hallelujah. What a description of Goliath. Hallelujah. And then verse 11, when Saul and all Israel had those words of the Philistine, that is Goliath, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly jump to verse, verse 30. When David came on the scene, let me just paraphrase it. We understand that the Philistines and the army of Israel were in a battle. The Bible says that the army of the Philistines were on a mountain, and then the children of Israel were on the other side. The army of Israel was on the other side, on another mountain, and the valley was in between them. And the champion emerged, described in verse 4 to 7, called Goliath, and he threatened them. And he said, I defy you armies of Saul. I defy you armies of Saul. Take note of that. I defy you armies of Saul. He said, choose from among you somebody who will come and fight me. If the person defeats me, then we become your slaves. And if I defeat the person, then you become our slaves forever. And the Bible says for 40 days, Goliath harassed them. Goliath repeated the same same statement. And despite the fact that Saul was the tallest in the whole of Israel, and the Bible says from the shoulder upwards, there was nobody as tall as Saul. Despite the fact that Saul was the tallest and he had the armies of Israel with him, the Bible says they could not face Goliath. For 40 days, he harassed them. Then about the 40th day, Jesse sent David to go and see the welfare, to the welfare of his brothers. And David got there, and then it was about the time that they were going into the battle. That is for another day. It couldn't have been a coincidence that it was about the time that they were going into battle that David arrived there. And then when they got there, the Bible says the Goliath came out and then harassed them, repeated the same thing. And the Bible says they were all afraid. And David said, (laughs) and David had the same thing that they had. And David said, who is this? And they said, this, that is the champion Goliath. That is how he has been harassing us for 40 days. And he said, the king has promised that whoever defeats him, he will give that person his daughter to marry. And then he began to ask from one person to another until he, they told Saul that there is a boy around here. Remember his elder brother, Eliab, asked, said, we know your pride. You know, we know you like to come to the battle. Initially, you had tried to join the army, but you didn't qualify and you were sent back home. Now you have come so that you can be part of the army. They told you to come and drop food. What are you doing on the battle? field. And then David made a very powerful statement, which is also for another day, maybe a Friday, when we discuss the patterns. David said in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 29, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Do you think it's by coincidence that I'm on the battlefield right now? And then they took him to Saul. And then he told Saul something. He said, let no man's heart fail him. 
Let nobody be afraid concerning this uncircumcised Philistine. He said, because he's not defying the armies of Saul, he's defying the armies of God. And then Saul told him, you are a child. This guy has been fighting from the days of his youth. And David said, well, I used to keep my father. I may not have a record of battlefield, but I used to keep my father's sheep. And a day came that the bear came and the lion came. And he said, I delivered the sheep from the bear. And then when the lion took the sheep, I ran after him. I smote him. I pulled him by the beard. And I delivered the sheep from his hand. And he said, the same God that gave me the bear and the lion will deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hand. And then Saul gave him his armor to wear. He couldn't wear it because it was heavy. And he went, took it off. And then Saul said, God be with you. And the Bible says, David went to Goliath in battle. When Goliath saw him, he said, am I a dog? You are coming to me with slings and stones. He said, do you know who I am? I've been fighting since I was your age. And then he began to curse him in the name of his God. And he said, I will feed your body to the board. And then thank God for David. There are many lessons in 1 Samuel 17, but I want to just focus on one today, which is managing fear. The Bible says that David spoke back don't ever allow the enemy to have the final say. David spoke back and he said, you come to me with bows and spears. He said, I come to you in the name of the God of the army of Israel that you have defied. And he said, today I will feed your body to the boss of the air. I'm bringing you down today. You are dying today. Goliath, you are dying today. That Goliath of fear, that giant of fear that has been harassing you is coming down today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm bringing you down to Today. You are coming down today. And the Bible says he hastened towards him and he fired the first stone. And the stone hit him on the forehead and he slumped and he died. And the Bible says that David ran, took the sword that belonged to Goliath and cut off his head. And the Bible says, so David killed the Philistine. And the Bible says something that there was no sword in the hand of of David. Hallelujah. So that is the summary of the text. You see, it's a long one, but I just try to paraphrase it. Managing fear. What is fear? Fear is a collection of feelings, perceptions, and, you know, expectations that something bad is going to happen. Fear is a collection of perceptions, feelings, you know, and fears that something bad is going to happen. I used to tell people fear is a form of faith. Fear is a form of faith. Fear is faith in the fact that contrary to what God told you, contrary to the promises of God, contrary to what you are believing God for, that is what is going to happen. So fear is a form of faith. Fear is faith in believing that what the devil is suggesting to you is what is going to happen. That is what fear is. That is what fear is. It is human to be afraid. It is human to be afraid. It is human to be afraid. And that is why I love the Bible so much. It records people who exercise faith and then also who exercise fear. It's human to be afraid because we are human and we have emotions and we have feelings. Remember I said fear is a feeling that something bad is going to happen. Or something contrary to expectation is what is going to happen. Fear is of the devil. Fear is of the devil. And you should never give it a place at all. What is the effect of fear? Remember I said I'm going to go in a way of teaching as it were tonight. What are the effects of fear? Number one effect of fear is torment. The Bible says in that first John chapter 4 verse 18, there is no fear in love because perfect love casted out fear. He said, but fear has torment. Fear torments. Fear harasses. That is exactly what Goliath was doing for 40 days. Maybe they were even peeing in their trousers. The whole army of men, adults, with broad chest, led by sword, the tallest in Israel. But fear has torment. Have you ever been afraid? Look back at the time that you were afraid. You were so tormented. Some people are so afraid they can't sleep. If you don't manage fear and overcome it, then it graduates to become panic. And panic will graduate to become anxiety. And when you have anxiety, you can hardly sleep. Because fear generates worry. Fear generates concerns. Fear begins to, you know, su suggestions and questions begin to come in your heart. Do you think this thing will go? 
ha, this way you are coughing. Don't you think this is coronavirus? This way you are sneezing. You know you had the contact with that person some other time ago. See, your body temperature is rising. Is this not coronavirus? You know? Oh, it's going to be month end very soon. Your rent is going to be due very soon. Will you be able to pay? Now that there's coronavirus and world economies are failing, are you sure you will still be able to keep your job? Are you sure you won't be sacked? Fear has torment. I tell you, most of the things you're afraid of will never happen. Most of the things you're afraid of will never happen. Don't worry, we'll still see tonight how to overcome fear. But number one effect of fear is torment. Fear torments. Another effect of fear is that it entraps. Fear is a bondage. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, that we, are, we have no longer the spirit of bondage to fear. But we have the spirit of adoption by which we can cry out, Abba, Father. So one symbol of fear is bondage. Fear entraps. Fear will not allow you to go forward. Fear is a demobilizer. If you have ever used a vehicle with a demobilizer, the demobilizer will not stop you from starting that vehicle. You will start the car, it will come on, but it will never move from the spot. Why? Because a demobilizer has been applied. That is what fear does. When you are afraid, you will never write that exam. When you are afraid, you will never venture into that business. When you are afraid, you will never have or make that move. When you are afraid, you will never have that investment. When you are afraid, you will never make that move. Fear is a stumbling block. I saw something precious in 1 Samuel chapter 8. I would like to read it to you. I don't want to paraphrase it. Isaiah chapter 8, sorry. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12. God said in his word, he says, Say not a confederacy to all them that these people say a confederacy unto. Neither fear ye their fear. That is, don't talk the way these people are talking. Don't be afraid of what they are afraid of. He said, if you can do that, he said, but sanctify the Lord of hosts. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He said, if you can do that, then God or that act of faith will serve for you as a covering, a sanctuary. He said, but for those who are still afraid, who still say a confederacy to what they are saying, a confederacy, who still fear their fear. He said, their fear will be a stumbling block to them. Let me read it to you. Isaiah chapter 8 from verse 12. He says, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Don't be afraid. 366 places in the Bible where God said, Fear not. God has made provision for every day, including the leap year. 366 places in the Bible where he said, Fear not. When he was going to start walking with Joshua, he told him, Moses, my servant is dead. He said, be strong and be courageous. Don't be afraid. Fear limits God. Fear limits you. Fear serves as a stumbling block. Let me read verse 9 to you. He said, associate yourself, oh, sorry, verse, verse 13, sorry. And sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Verse 14. And it shall be for you a sanctuary. If you can make sure that I don't fear their fear, you don't say confederacy to a confederacy to what they are saying, a confederacy to. He said, then you will have a covering, a sanctuary over you. He said, but if you fear like them, <laughs> he said, then it will be a stumbling block. He said, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare. Fear has snare. Fear and traps. Fear is a trap. It's a bondage. He said to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, verse 15, and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. That is why he told them in that verse 12, say not a confederacy to all these people that this people are saying, God, neither fear ye their fear. The day you fear their fear, say a confederacy to what they are saying, the confederacy to, you become entrapped. Fear entraps. Fear demobilizes. Fear will not allow you to make that move. Fear will not allow you to make that move. It will not allow you to apply for that job, to apply for that contract, to apply for that post. Fear will not allow you to take that step. Fear demobilizes. Fear is a stumbling block. Another effect of fear is that it's the devil's weapon of oppression. 
If you are not afraid, the devil cannot oppress you. In Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus said to, Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, the devil has sent a request letter for you. The devil has desired to have you. He said, but have, and he has desired to sift you like wheat. He has desired to shake you. He said, but I've prayed for you that your faith does not fail. And when you are converted, then convert your brethren. You know why? If your faith is in place, fear will, will not be able to move you. Because the essence of fear is to shake you. If the devil is going to oppress anyone, the first thing he will introduce is fear. Oh, that symptom you are having, that's not the symptom of cancer. <laughs> you read that story in the, in, the, in the newspaper, you read it on the internet, that person that had cancer, was it not the first sign that that person noticed in her body or in his body? So fear <laughs> is the weapon of the devil for oppression. When you are not afraid, David said, Jesus said, I prayed for you so that the devil, your faith does not fail. Once there is faith in place, fear cannot stay in the same place. Somebody said, when fear knocks the door, send faith to go and open the door. And you soon discover that fear is no longer at the door. It can't wait for faith. And that is why you need faith. That is why Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith does not fail. If your faith does not fail, fear will not come in and the devil will not have you. But eventually, you saw that the devil had Peter. Because even an ordinary child asked him, are you not one of them? You look like that. I saw you here with him. And he saw that I never knew him. He denied Jesus Christ three times. He was afraid. Maybe they will crucify me along with him. Maybe they will kill me also, put me in prison forever. So his fear, you know, caused the devil to oppress him. Hallelujah. Another effect of fear is that fear is an invitation letter for the devil to attack. This is one reason why you must never allow fear. Fear is an invitation letter for the devil to attack. Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job said, the things that I feared have come upon me. The things I was afraid of has come upon me. He said, I was not at ease. I want to read it to you. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Job chapter 3, verse 25. Hallelujah. And 26. Job chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Job chapter 3, 25 and 26. Job said, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. The Bible says, He that believeth shall not make it. The Bible says, Those who have believed have entered into His rest, and those who have entered into His rest have ceased from their own works, just like God ceased from His own works also. So when you see yourself running a task, Panic buying, going everywhere, it is a, an expression of fear. Job said, I was not quiet. If you read Job chapter 1, his children were having parties as it were, you know, feasts in their siblings' houses. I guess they were rotating it. They moved from one person's house to another almost every day. And after it, the Bible says that Job will render an offering, a sacrifice. Saying that I don't know what my children did yesterday. Maybe they've committed a sin against God. Ah, so that no devil will attack them. Ah, so that no evil will happen to them. He said I was not quiet. I was not at rest. I was running a task. He said, yeah, but yet yeah, trouble came. <laughs> that is what fear does. Fear and trust. Fear sets you running a task. Fear sets you running up and down. Never allow fear. Job said, the thing that I feared have greatly come upon me. The moment you are afraid concerning that exam, you are inviting the devil to attack you in that exam. The moment you are afraid concerning that business, you have invited the devil. It's an invitation letter for the enemy to attack. Fear is an invitation letter for the enemy to attack. Never give room to fear. Never give room to fear. What is another effect of fear? Fear robs you of your testimony. Fear denies you of your testimony. First John chapter 5, verse from first John chapter, sorry, James chapter 1 from verse 5. James chapter 1 from verse 5. He said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives liberally 
without upbraiding anyone, and God will give it to him. He said, but when that person is asking, let him ask in faith, not doubting. For he that doubts or wavers is like the wave of the sea that is tossed to and fro. He said, let that man not think that he will receive anything from God. Let that man not think that he will receive anything from God. Fear robs you of your testimony. Fear denies you of your testimony. You must never allow fear. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. Because whoever wavers is like the wave of the sea. And that person should not think that he will receive anything from God. The Bible says that whoever wavers is unstable in all his ways. And he can never receive anything from God. Another effect of fear, hallelujah, is that fear makes you to sink. Fear sinks. When you are afraid of that thing, then you sink, you don't survive it. Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. Peter experienced something that no other human being experienced up till now. There was a crusade and Jesus had finished preaching and then he sent his disciples to go ahead of him. And the Bible says in the middle of the night, he came to them on the sea, walking on the sea. The Bible says when they saw him, they were afraid. And they say, it is a ghost. But Jesus said to them, it is I, it is not a ghost. And then Peter said, if you are the one, master, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter actually walked on water. I want to have that kind of experience. Peter stepped on water. But the Bible says something in Matthew 14, verse 30. When he saw the wind boisterous, when he saw the boisterous wind, when he changed his focus from Jesus to the wind, the Bible says he began to sink. Fear sinks. The Bible says when he saw the boisterous wind, he was afraid and began to sink. If you allow fear, fear will sink you. That will not be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will never sink. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything the enemy has orchestrated to sink your life, to sink that marriage, to sink your business, to sink your academics, to sink your career, I decree they lose their hold over your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, how does fear come? Number one, fear comes from what you see. The Bible says in that Matthew 14, 30, when Peter saw the boisterous wind, he was afraid. Be careful of what you behold. Because what you behold is what you actually become. You will become what you look like. The Bible says as we behold him as in a glass, we are changing the same image from glory to glory, even as the image of the Father. Fear comes from what you see. When he saw the boy straw swing, he was afraid. When the children of Israel saw Goliath, look at the way it was described. In that 1 Samuel 17, verse 4 to 7. The Bible says, even the spear, the head of his spear weighed about 400 shekels. His shield had to be carried by somebody else. His shoes, he had metals covering his shins. He had helmets. He had strong covering. So when the children of Israel saw him, they were afraid. Fear comes from what you see. Another way fear comes is from what you hear. Fear comes from what you hear. For Samuel 17, verse 11, the Bible says, When the armies of Israel had the words of Goliath, the Bible says they were frightened. They were afraid. And that is why for 40 days, none of them could attack him. What have you heard? Is it a medical report? Is it a scan report? Is it a quick notice from your landlord? What have you heard? I pray for you today, whatever you have heard that is, has entrapped you in fear, I decree your deliverance now in the name of Jesus Christ. It loses effect over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fear comes from what you hear. Be cautious, be careful what you hear. The Bible says that while we behold the things, not, we don't look at the things that are seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. The things which are not seen, they are the ones that are eternal. Affliction is only for a moment, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. He said, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more eternal weight of glory. Why, how will it do it when we don't look at what we see? 
For what we see is temporary. One of my mentors of blessed memory, Dr. Miles Morrow, he said, when what you see is contrary to what you saw, that is what God showed you, then you should know that it is temporary. What you see will soon pass. Coronavirus will soon pass. Coronavirus will soon be a thing of the past, just like Ebola passed, <laughs> Hurricane Katrina passed, you know, tsunami passed. It will soon pass. It is what God has told you, the eternal word of God, that which is invisible, that is what will last forever. That challenge will soon pass. The fact that now you can't provide food for your family, it will soon pass. It is temporary. Anything that you see is temporary. It is what you don't see, which is the promise of God concerning your life, that is eternal. I pray for you today, everything causing fear and harassment around your life, I command them to pass away speedily. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How does fear come again? Fear comes by what people say. That is why that Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 says, Say not a confederacy to all these people shall say confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, but sanctify the Lord of hosts. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. He said, if you can do that, then it will be for you a sanctuary. But if you don't do that, then it will be a stumbling block. Don't fear. Don't allow fear by what people say. The Bible says when people say there's a casting down, we shall say there's a lifting up. Job 22, 29. We shall say there's a lifting up. Don't allow what people say. Move away. I could remember there was a time I went for a job interview, you know, in medical parlance. You know, it was for an appointment as a resident doctor. And I'm a family physician. My specialty involves all the, others, all, the, all the other specialties as it were put into one. So they were going to ask us questions from every other specialty, ONG, pediatrics, medicine, surgery, you know, ophthalmology. So I got to the venue of the, I got to the place, city. It wasn't the city where I was living then. I got to the city where I was going to write the exam a day before the exam. I packed books along. By the time I opened all the books, when I'm reading this one, one mind will tell me, what if they ask you a question from the other one? I will drop it and go and pick the other one. It got to a point, I said, there's no way I can prepare and read everything before tomorrow. So I closed the book. I said, God help me. When I got to the venue of the exam, we didn't start early. The venue of the interview, it was going to be a written interview. You know, I got to the venue of the interview, definitely there was a crowd. And then there was a colleague there, very brilliant guy. But the guy just started talking. Oh, I was at uh, this interview in, in uh, Zaria like two weeks ago. They asked us this question. They asked us this question. Then my heart would jack. Ah, I didn't remember to read that one. Then you say, ah, you didn't mean I was at UBTH two weeks ago. They asked us this question. They asked us this question. Oh, do you know the answer? <laughs> I would say, I don't know. I can't remember. Then he would tell us the answer. After some time, I moved away from where he was. I moved away from where he was because he was, by the virtue of what he was saying, fear was coming in. Because I was like, I've not read all these things. And then a senior colleague came in who was also writing the same interview. We had not seen for like two years. So when I saw her, I greeted her. We used to be in the same service group in church. So I was asking her, oh, she was asking me too, how is everybody? Because when she got married, she relocated. You know, so when we saw, oh, she was, we were doing some catching up. What about this person? What about this person? Well, everybody's fine. Then I just asked her, what are you reading for this interview? And she brought out a book. I don't think the book is up to 20 pages. She said, this is what I was reading yesterday before I slept off. Can we look at it together? And so we started looking at it together from page one, page two, page three, and then page four. And then they came in and they said, take away all books. It's time for the oral interview. Please sit down where you are. So I couldn't change location. We're both sitting down together. We dropped the books and packed everything away. They served us the question. I tell you before God, there were only 10 multiple choice questions. We call it MCQ. But the bulk of the exam, which was going to carry about 80 marks out of 100, was an essay. Family medicine, content, concept, context, discourse. All the books I had read had no, were of no value. But do you know that that book we were looking at, and the first three pages explain the concept and the context of family medicine? By the time that interview result came out, I scored the highest, 36 over 40. I scored 36 over 40 because everything was scored over 40, then we went for the orals. Am I not brilliant? 
<laughs> Fear will want to come from what people are saying. Say not a confederacy to all these people are saying the confederacy. Don't fear their fear. Sanctify the Lord of hosts. Let him be your fear and your dread. Then it will be a sanctuary for you. Refuse to be afraid by what people are saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the last way that fear comes is by what you know. Especially some of us who are doctors and professionals. At times, you know, what we know at times may limit your faith. In the book of Numbers chapter 11, the Bible says the children of Israel rebelled and complained that we are tired of manna, we want to eat meat. And then they went to complain against Moses and then Moses went to God. And God told Moses, the people are not complaining. You know, their complaint is not addressed at you. They actually complain against me. Don't worry. I will give them meat to eat. For one month, flesh will be coming out of their nostrils. They will eat so much. They want to eat meat. I will give them so much that it will be coming out of their nostrils for one month. Then Moses' knowledge came to play. You know, he, he studied in Egypt. Egypt was one of the greatest nations on the earth then. So, so let's say probably he graduated from Harvard Business School with a first class. And then he had his master's and PhD in Harvard Business School. And God said, I'm going to give them enough meat that it will be coming out of their nostrils. Then Moses asked God, if we kill all the flocks that we came out of Egypt with and serve it to these people, he said, I have with me about 200,000, is this 200 or 600,000 foot soldiers? If you had 600,000 foot soldiers, you can imagine the number of women, maybe 1.2 million women, and then maybe another 1.5 million children, making a total of about 3 point something million people. So Moses used this avid brain. And Moses said, God, if we kill all the ads that we came out of Egypt with and use it to feed these people, it won't be enough. If we kill all the fish and the animals in the sea and serve it to these people, it won't be enough. Then God said, is my hand work short? <laughs> Why are you limiting me to the ads that you came out of Egypt with? Why are you limiting me? So at times our knowledge makes us to fear because Moses was afraid. You will give them meat for one month. It will be coming out of their nostrils. All the hearts we came out of Egypt with can't be enough for that. Though. So his knowledge began to create fear. At times, fear comes from what we know. Like I said, as a doctor, at times you see a diagnosis. And then you, know, you are talking to the person on the other side. You are afraid for him or her. That this is cancer. Or this is diabetes. And this is so bad. This kidney function is almost gone. This kidney is almost totally gone. And the person on the other side is smiling. And says, doctor, don't worry. <laughs> Jehovah Rapha, he's my healer. Don't worry, doctor. I will be fine. <laughs> and you are thinking with yourself, because of what you know, you are afraid for him or her. Moses was afraid. But God did not take out of the ads that they brought out of Egypt. God did not take out of the fish in the sea. But the Bible says there went forth a wind from the Lord. And it brought quails round about the camp. The Bible says if you want to start picking those quails, it will take you a day's journey, 24 hours. If you continue to pick continuously, 24 hours round about the camp. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you today, what you are afraid of will not happen. God will disappoint your fears. You will not be embarrassed. You will not see shame. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God will turn your fear to faith and God will turn your test to testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Quickly as I round up on this broadcast, how do I overcome fear? How do I overcome fear? Number one, recognize that it exists. Faith does not deny the presence of the fact, but faith relies on the truth the validity and the superiority of the truth. The facts are there. Faith does not deny it. But faith believes that irrespective of what is happening, I will still have my testimony. Hallelujah. Recognize that it is there. In the book of Psalm 61, David says something. He said, Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. He said, for when my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Recognize that you might be overwhelmed with fear. When you are overwhelmed with fear, then go to the rock. 
I asked you again, have you ever been afraid? Let me share another testimony with you. It was a course I, 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 I sat for in my ND1 at the Polytechnic. I actually had, did ND course in electrical engineering at the Polytechnic. There's a powerful course. I know for every faculty, for every department, there are those courses that create fear. That even the code alone, the mention of that course alone, <laughs> I could remember in UI in those days, chemistry 157 was like a demon. Once they hear it, chemistry 157, ah, only 60% passed the last time, only 40% passed the last time. So this course was called Thermo, I think it was Thermo 157, I can't remember, but it was Thermodynamics. That's the title of that course. So we sat down for this course, picked question one, carried 40 marks out of 100. And then the others, I think we were to answer, do question one was compulsory, and then the other questions, about three of them, you were to do three out of five or three out of four. I can't remember so well anymore. But question one says that you were supposed to calculate that a beam was leaning against the wall at a perpendicular wall at angle 70 degrees. And then you are meant to make some calculations. If you subtract 70 from 90, which is the angle of perpendicular, and some of perpendicular angle is 90, then you should have 20. I don't know what happened to me in that exam. I, calcul I subtracted 70 from 100. So I did all my calculations using 30 degrees instead of using 20 degrees. That was question one, 40 marks, the major question. So I had failed it. Then out of the three out of five that were meant to answer, I didn't answer one, I only answer two. So I was afraid that I failed this exam, I failed this course, Tamu, I failed this course. I was afraid. And then a day came and they told us the result was out, that we should go and, you know, collect our, strip, strip, uh, our scripts. I was so afraid, I said I wasn't going. In fact, we just finished the lecture, I was going in the wrong direction. One of my friends called me and said, that's not the way to the lecturer's office. I did as if I, I made a mistake, but actually I wanted to run away. I didn't want to go and collect any script. I, I concluded I had failed. And then we got to the front of the lecturer's office and then, you know, he kept us waiting for about 30 minutes or more. I started, I became restless. Why is it that this man is keeping us like this? That's what I said. You should have given the script to our class captain. Let's go, let's go, you know? Because I was afraid I failed this course. And then after like 40 minutes, you know, the lecturer came out. And he said, before I release this script, I want to address you. All of you come together. He said, number one, when I give you this script and you see your marks, never come to me to come and complain. He said, why? He said, I will tell you why. He said, when I finish marking, all the scripts, I decided to add 10, 10 marks to everybody's score, over 100. He didn't do any continuous assessment, so he was using that exam as you know, the total of everything. He said, so I decided to add 10, 10 marks to everybody. He said, number two, some of you were using 30 degrees instead of 20 degrees. What is the sum of a perpendicular angle is 90? If you subtract 70 from 90, is it not 20? He said, but some of you decided to use 30 degrees. He said, you know what? I decided to overlook it. Ah. He said, so whatever you see is your score over 100%. That's your score in this course. I began to shake when he said that. And then, you know, he gave the script to the class captain. He started announcing the names and giving out the script. And then, do you know, the class captain called my name. When I collected my script, do you know what was there? 56 over 60. By the time I converted it to over 100, I scored about 97%. The course I was afraid of ended up being the course that I scored the highest in my two years of OND electrical engineering. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice today that God will disappoint your fears in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And your greatest fear will become your greatest testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will give you a song of victory to sing instead of a song of fear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So how do I overcome fear? Number one, recognize that it exists. Number two, know who you are. Goliath harassed them and said, you are armies of Saul. 
But when David came, David said, we are not armies of Saul. We are armies of the living God. Know who you are. That is what made David to face Goliath. As long as the armies of Israel thought that they were the armies of Saul, they could not face Goliath. Recognize who you are. You are a child of God. That is why I played that song for you. I will play it as a roundup on this broadcast. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. Know who you are. And then you overcome that fear. Another way of overcoming your fear is to build your faith. Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, if your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Build your faith. Remember what I said, if fear knocks the door, ask faith to go and open it. When faith gets to the door, fear will no longer be there. It would have run away. Build your faith. How do you build your faith? Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Look at other people's testimonies. That is what helped David. He said, I killed the lion and the bear. The God that gave me the lion and the bear will give me this uncircumcised Philistine. That is why he was not afraid. Another way of overcoming fear, recognize divine presence is with you. Psalm 23 verse 4, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is with you. God is on your side. God is for you. And if God be for you, nothing and no one can be against you. So don't allow fear. Know that God is for you. The Bible says, for this, I will say, God, for this, I know God is for me. God is for you. God is not against you. He's the one that has the key of hell and of death. It is no longer in the hand of the devil. So he won't open the key of death to you or your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Know that God is for you. Know who you are and know what you have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recognize divine presence and then know that fear is of the devil. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Then ask God to help you. Tell God, Lord, disappoint my fears. I love something that happened in Matthew 14, 30. The Bible says that when, when Peter saw the boisterous wind, he began to sink. But the Bible says he exclaimed, he shouted, Master, help me. And the Bible says immediately Jesus rescued him. Call on God to help you. Call on God to disappoint your fears and God will arise for you. Immediately, Jesus did not ask a question. Jesus did not say, why did you doubt? Jesus rescued him first. Hallelujah. Call on him and he will help you. And lastly, confront that fear with faith and in faith. Just do it. What is it that the enemy has been saying you can't do? Do it and you will see that it can be done. Remember what I said, what you are afraid of is actually afraid of you. That's what I found out about life. What you are afraid of is actually afraid of you. I was telling my daughter recently, she saw a wall gecko and then she was afraid. I said, if you, the day I stumbled on it in Genesis chapter 1, God blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it, have dominion over everything that is in the sea and everything that moves on the face of the earth. Every animal that exists fears man. The elephant as big as it is is afraid of man. The lion as big as is afraid of man. What you're afraid of is actually afraid of you. Face it with faith. The Bible says David hastened towards Goliath. What audacity. He hastened towards Goliath. I used to say jokingly, I said, when he hastened towards Goliath, Gabriel called God and said, Oh, thing, law is <laughs> already going. He hastened towards Goliath. What audacity. What that thing has been telling you you can't do, that you have been afraid of, do it. In faith, do it with faith. And you will see God show up for you. Apply for that job. Write that exam. Sit for that exam. Start that project. Build that house. Make that investment. Make that move that the enemy has been harassing you that you won't be able to. And you will have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I would like you to pray with me. I want to pray with you also tonight. I want you to pray one prayer and say, Father, disappoint my fears in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every of my fears, Lord, turn my greatest fears to my greatest testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone pray right now. Just pray in the name of Jesus. Father, disappoint all my fears in the mighty name of Jesus. Disappoint my fears, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God in Jesus 
mighty name we are praying. The Bible says Jesus came to deliver those who have been held bondage by fear. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice today. Scripture says in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, shall come to pass in that day. His burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder, his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice today. Every yoke of fear, every bondage that fear has put you in, that has not allowed you to go forward in your career, that has not allowed you to go forward in your work with God, that has not allowed you to go forward in your ministry, that has not allowed you to go forward in your businesses, that has not allowed you to go forward in any area of life. I I decree such snares, such yokes, such bondage is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. As they are broken, they are destroyed with unquenchable fire. By the anointing on God's word today, I decree every yoke destroyed in your life. The yoke of fear is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, receive power. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive faith. Receive a sound mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to walk in love that casted out fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every effect of fear on your life, I decree from tonight it is over. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command a reversal. In the name of Jesus, everything you have lost to the enemy through fear, I decree tonight double restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, double restoration. In the name of Jesus, that home is restored. That relationship is restored. There's someone you've been Maybe you had a failed relationship and because of that you've gotten stuck at one spot. No more. You are not thinking of marriage. You are not thinking of relationship. I decree be loose from that infirmity. In the name of Jesus, the next venture will not fail. The next venture will be a success. You will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will succeed. You will excel. Go and win. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God bless you. I want to say a word of prayer for someone who is out there who doesn't know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, fear as torment. If you are not of God, then you'll be under the bondage of fear. Can you just say this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for all my sins. I confess all of them today. I want you to be the Lord of my life so I can be free from the bondage of fear. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins and wash me clean with your blood. From today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray the grace of God will keep you to the very end. You will walk with God and you will not be afraid again. You will no longer be a bondage to fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, thank you for joining me today. Deboye Temitokbe, thank you. Alabioye Sola, thank you. Debisi, thank you. Kome, thank you. Fumilayo Adeoye, Alao now, thank you for joining. Temitokbe, thank you for joining. Let this video go viral, especially in these times that people are afraid because of coronavirus. Spread the message that fear has torment and you are free from fear forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go to my channel on YouTube. Uluwag Bemiga Droja is the channel. Go to my channel on YouTube and then subscribe, like, and share those videos. This video will soon be there, uploaded there, and I will share it even tonight. Let it go viral. Start a watch party. Let your friends know it. And I would like you, I invite you to join me this Friday, 6 p.m. West African time, and 1700 hours GMT on the patterns. I will continue on the patterns. I started powerfully last week. We'll continue short, sharp, and punchy. That's what the pattern is all about. Short, sharp, and punchy. Are you building according to the pattern? We're going to continue this Friday. I would like you to join me. Share this video. Let people see it. And let it be a blessing to others. Continue to join us on the script ministry page on Facebook and then at letter D, script ministry on Instagram and then letter D, script ministry, that's the script ministry on Twitter also, that's our Twitter handle. You can send us your testimony. I really want to hear your testimonies. At the beginning of this broadcast, I shared the testimony of someone from the last, yes, last week's broadcast. I shared someone's testimony, how she received a, a miracle baby. We believe God. God has perfected it and she's going to have a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So you never can tell who this video will be a blessing to. So broadcast it. Let it go viral. Let somebody watch it and then they will thank you for it. Once again, thank you for joining us. Till I come your way again on Church on the Waves on another broadcast, remain blessed. Remember you are a child of God. You are free from fear. 
to live a life of liberty, dominion, and victory in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. Go and win in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.